Please welcome Lake Star partner Christoph Schu in conversation with Skift senior travel tech editor Sean O'Neill. So, uh, Christoph, thank you so much for joining us for Skift Forum Europe, uh, joining us from Hamburg today. Uh, I realize you're usually based in, in Berlin. Thank you for joining us. A pleasure. Um, I, Lake Star is well known for having invested in several of Europe's best known travel startups, including Omeo, Get Your Guide, and home to go uh, You've also invested in some early stage companies like Impala and uh, Limehouse. Um, so before we, we got on this uh, c conversation, you we were saying that uh, just last week, you and at Lake Star and Holtzbrick Ventures uh, put together a little round table where you were sort of talking with some of the portfolio companies about some of the perspectives of uh, what might be happening in the sector in terms of recovery and also maybe mergers and acquisitions things. Are there any high level uh, sort of like uh, lessons or things that bubbled up in that conversation that you could share? Yes, of course. So uh, first of all, I can't give you all details because it was a private discussion, but in general, I can tell you what we have talked about and that's super interesting. So the discussion started with um, the M&A market and I think um, that is something uh, where Morgan Stanley was sharing some data that the uh, travel market has slowly recovered. So uh, the market is still 23% down to the highest level pre-COVID, but it has recovered for about 40%. I think that's interesting. And all the big guys like Airbnb and Booking and Expedia, they all have refinanced themselves properly. So that was a general finding that uh, in this crisis mode, first of all, you have to make sure that you are properly financed. And, and that's uh, what all the guys <clears throat> have done. And what we have discussed as well, uh, so how uh, the best financing tactics, and I, I, the only thing I can say is that everyone is agreeing that financing now, uh, you have to do to make sure whatever happens, uh, if, if wave two comes or whatever, you are double hit it in that travel market. That's why everyone was aware of it. So secondly, and that's something which I would like to share uh, with, with you guys, uh, we had some interesting analyzes from Terralytics, which is another portfolio companies of us. So what they are doing, they are analyzing movement data. They're getting the data from the telco companies um, like Telefonica and others. And they are, <clears throat> so you can see what kind of movements uh, have happened uh, within pre-COVID and COVID times. And, and you can first of all see, and, and that is uh, interesting, <clears throat> how Germany recovered. And, and not only, uh, let's say, as a whole country, but uh, let's say city by city and, and, and beach areas and mountain areas, I think that is super interesting. And then you, you, you see some findings that, uh, let's say, air hasn't recovered at all. So we are minus 94%. You can see the train is starting to recover, but it's still between minus 70 and 80%. And interestingly, let's say car has fully recovered. So car is the tool uh, which everyone is using at the moment, and it has recovered to a level which is up above the year before. That's super interesting. And if it comes to, let's say, travel tactics for accommodation and vacation rental and hotels or whatever, so uh, what, what we have seen is that an area of 200 kilometers is, let's say, the reach of where, let's say, people feel safe and, and that's how they're planning. And that was interestingly to see not only for Germany, but also for Italy, for UK and other countries. So, um, and, and that UK is um, recovering uh, slowly. So Italy and Germany are on its way to recover sooner. That's fantastic. It's really, really informational, sort of big overview there of the recovery. Um, earlier this year, Lake Star raised a $735 million fund. Um, some of that money may go to travel and transportation and mobility companies, not all of it, but still it's a very large fund. Why raise such a large fund? Yeah, it's a good question. So we have analyzed the market and we have seen that for seed and series A, so for early investments, so Europe is, let's say, competitive to the US and to Asia. But if it comes to gross investments, uh, so there's a big gap in Europe. So there's nearly no one 
who is in that sweet spot of 50 million rounds, Series C, Series D, Series E. And we said, um, first of all, we want to follow an, 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 a founder, the whole journey from seed up to the IPO. And that's what you can only do with a dedicated growth fund. And secondly, we don't want to lose all the interesting, attractive, competitive deals to US or Asian funds. We want to be competitive and that's why we raised the fund. And we have really actively invested out of that fund in companies like Revolut, like Get Your Guide um, and, 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 and Sender and others. And, and I'm, I have to say we are super happy um, that we build now the, let's say, DNA for growth investments in Europe. And that's uh, so that makes logical sense. Europe didn't really have in the way Silicon Valley had a seed to IPO kind of capital structure. So this is going to be, this is going to strengthen the European ecosystem, it sounds like. Um, uh, based on your exactly. portfolio yeah. investments, yeah. you seem to really like investing in travel aggregators. You seem to be very optimistic and bullish about the travel aggregator model. Um, why? Yeah, that's also a good question. So we have analyzed the customer journey B2C. We were saying, hey, what, what's going on? So you have, to, you have to invest into the category winners in accommodation, in tours and attractions, uh, in, uh, in ground transportation and others. And, and, and we, I have to say, we, we more tend to invest later, uh, like examples like home to go where uh, we have seen that they are the clear vacation rental marketplace. We have invested in to get you guide later because we wanted to see who's the category killer in that tours and activity segment. And, and so, um, and it's all about the aggregation of the supply side. And this is a strong LinkedIn. Take the Omeo example, they have more than 600, 600 suppliers connected. Take the home to go more than 500 different vacation rental suppliers. So it's a lot of, let's say, API connect work and that makes the marketplace super strong and then they all go vertical. Uh, so some of them have started as a meta search like home to go and is going and, and they're all going now vertical. And that's what we like. So building strong marketplace is being the category killer in the segment. And we are, let's say, uh, so we are fully aware that COVID is, is something which um, will need two to three years for the full recovery. But we see then if you are then the category killer, it makes you even stronger because the competition, uh, so it, it's, it's um, one, let's say it's, it's at the end, one company who, who will win that marketplace race, that's our opinion. Okay, Christoph, that makes sense. For our attendees uh, watching this, we're going to have a poll question here. Please, we encourage you to participate in the poll. Christoph, I want to push back a little bit on what you just said, because I think the number one category killer is Google. Uh, especially now in the pandemic, people are going to be doing a lot of their mobile research even more on Google about is the destination safe? Are things open? And in a sense, a lot of your portfolio companies in the aggregator model and meta search they're, they're, they seem to be like on a crash course with Google if Google gets into them. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, have, I think uh, there are two dimensions. So one dimension is if you go into verticals like vacation rental, I think it's not, and if there's no GDS like in the hotel or in the air market, so it's not easy for Google to go really deep because you have to long tail connect to all the suppliers. If it's a GDS related market like air, um, I think it's, it's a different view. It's more easy for Google to, to, to uh, use the one boxes, which you know, which are on top of the, of the Google uh, result pages. So um, we are fully aware that these one boxes are tricky for the travel companies, but that's why I think the only answer is to go really deep into vertical long tail aggregation. And the second aspect is, um, let's say, what, what did Google do when uh, COVID um, happened? So um, I think as, as a big market player like Google, an ecosystem player, so they were playing a bit more strict on, um, on, on payment terms and others. I think that is why eight uh, companies in Germany were sending a letter to um, the, the chief revenue officer, uh, Philip Schindler, and I think they are in discussions. And, and I have to say, as an ecosystem player like Google, you have to 
also support this kind of new, let's say, tech play. Um, it's not only a hardball. I think you have to be a fair player, and that's what they are discussing. And, and I like that discussion. And the last aspect is marketing efficiency is going up. So as the bidding is uh, not as competitive as before, so return on advertising spend is heavily going up. And uh, let's see how the new normal on the bidding on, on cost uh, on acquisition costs will look like. I'm super interested. So, so Christoph, what is your advice to some of your portfolio companies about how to manage this next stage? You know, I understand early on your advice had been, you know, cut your costs as quickly as possible, you know, uh, try, you know, there's, there's some of the classic business things, but in terms of a longer term perspective on things like maybe taking advantage of the new dynamics on uh, a bidding for ads or something, do you have any strategy or in terms of mergers and acquisitions? Yes. Yeah. First of all, I have to disagree. So our, advice was not to cut, cut cost at all. So okay. we were saying the product roadmap in terms of aggregating supply, for example, having the best product for the customer. So heavy invest here and, and go through because if you want to, let's say, win the market post COVID, you have to have the best product. And if, if companies stop investing in product and tech, I think that's what we don't like. So what we, what we have seen is stop investing in marketing stop investing in, in, in sales, but not stop investing in, in aggregating supply and, and tax. So that was the first thing. Second thing was do the financing now just to make sure that post COVID you have enough um, to come back to the cruising attitude, uh, altitude where you want to be back. And, and thirdly, and that was nicely done, being super transparent to your employees and to your investors about recovery scenarios, about uh, cost cutting and, and I was really impressed at how uh, let's say the the um, entrepreneurs were take were taking that um, big uh, let's say um, um, let's say crisis mode problem and how they handle it. I, I think it was well managed. It is still well managed. Yeah, that's a, that that makes sense. And, and we're also featuring today. We're talking with Johannes from Get Your Guide uh, today, and they have sort of not had hardly any cuts, and they've sort of followed that advice that you've given quite quite uh, close to heart. But I'm wondering, so do you have any sort of like more long term perspectives about the uh, upcoming year about taking advantage of, uh, like you say, yeah, you, might, you, might, you toggle I think, on marketing? I think what, what what we are heavily discussing at the moment was how does the new normal look like. Um, take uh, the vacation rental space. Um, how does individual travel in two to three years look like? So what kind of inventory do I need? What kind of travel will I do? How does, uh, let's say, tours and attraction look like in two to three years? And how does package trips? So what the new normal travel? And that's what we are heavily discussing. And, and I'm sure that, the, let's say, travel in two to, years, two to three years when it's fully recovered will not be the same as it was pre-COVID. And, and that's what we are heavily discussing. And I think that's what everyone has to do. Okay. That, that makes good sense. You know, there's a lot of investors who'd want to be staying away from travel right now for the next year due to the uncertainty. But Lake Star, it sounds like, is, is going to consider opportunities in travel. Um, yeah, is there, yeah. do you, why? <laughs> Yeah, you have to know it's an eight trillion market. It's it's one of the biggest markets behind financial services and, and two others. So and, and in the heritage of us, of every one of us, travel is one important element. And and that's why um, we think there will always be that phenomenon of travel. And and the, this eight trillion market will not go away. It will look different. And the second thing is the digitization of travel is still ongoing. Look into what Johannes is doing with tours and attraction. Just 20% is online, 80% is offline. There's a long way to go and a good, uh, let's say, scalability play to do. That's why we are still bullish on, on travel. A lot of times uh, startups need to have an acquiry to, to buy them and that's part of the exit plan. But a lot of companies, you know, the Airbnbs of the world are going to be very busy right now. Do you, is that a concern at all in terms of exit strategy? Um, I think uh, in terms of exit, uh, it's in travel, it's, it's a big topic because you have the booking on the one side uh, if it comes to accommodation play. And, and, and then uh, if it, um, so they are not so much exit candidates as in other industries. And IPO is tricky if it's a shaky market environment. 
but um, I think the companies are coming closer to profit profitability. So that's why they can wait longer as in the beginning when the GDS uh, was, let's say, implemented uh, post uh, Amadeo. So a, a lot of companies we are seeing, um, so in their post COVID plans, they will be profitable in two to three years. And then you can wait for the best sweet spot of IPO or whatever. And that's how we see it. That makes great sense. Christoph, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Good luck to you at Lakestar this yeah, year. All the best for you and for your conference. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.